Hello, my dear friends. There's certain irony about Noach. The Torah says about Noach, Noach is tzaddik, tamam hayu also. The greatest accolade that you give a person to say that he's an ish tzaddik. God Almighty testifies about Noach that he's a tzaddik. Why? Well, what could be better? Nonetheless, there's a, 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 a number of examples where we punch holes in Noach being a tzaddik. And, 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 the, and his faults are exposed. For example, there's an expression called a tzaddik in pelts. A tzaddik in pelts means a pelts is a, is a skin or, or a fur. It, a, it, if, it, if it's very cold in a room, you could do one of two things. Either you could light a, a, light a fire and heat up the room, or you could put on your winter coat and put on your scarf and your gloves and earmuffs, and then you'll be warm. The difference is that if you light a fire, it works for everyone. Everyone be, becomes warm. But if you put on a coat, then only the person who's wearing the coat becomes warm. So tzaddik in pelts is a, 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 a character of a person who's a big tzaddik, but he, he doesn't have an influence on anybody else. He puts on this fur, this fur coat, and he walks around like a big tzaddik that he is, but he has no influence on anybody else. That's, that's a tzaddik in pelts. So they say that Noach was a tzaddik in pelts because Noach, how many people did Noach influence? Avram Avinu, the Chumash says, Anefesh Shirasa B'charo, and Avram was Mekarev, many people. How many people was Noach Mekarev? And Noach built the table for 120, 20 and 20 years in order that people should do tshuva? How many, because the last Noah, what are you doing? And explain, he's building a table because the people are, are the world's going to be destroyed because of the sins. How many people became Bali Shuva because of Noah? The answer is, as you know, zilch, zero. Nobody became a Bal Shuva. So Noah is compared to, to a Tzadik in Pelts because he, he, he only had an influence on himself and no, nobody else. He locks himself up in a table. That's like, that's symbolic of Noah being a Tzadik. He's a Tzadik, but in his table, he's isolated from the rest of the world. He has no, no, no influence. So here, poor Noah, <laughs> the Torah says he's an East Tzaddik. And, and not a regular Tzaddik, but Tumim. Tumim means pure. It means complete. He's a complete Tzaddik. But, they, but they, they, then he becomes a Tzaddik in Pelts. What's going on? And, the, and, the, and there's a number of other examples. So I think the answer is because everything in the Torah is for instruction. And the Torah never idolizes people. Never makes people into Malachim. Malachim have no faults. But human beings always have faults. And the Torah is honest about those faults. The, the Torah tells us the faults of Moshe Rabbeinu and the faults of, of, of the Avos, of Avon Yitzhak and Yaakov. Why? Because the Torah is there for instruction. And human beings, as, as great as they could become, there's always something more that they could do. There are faults that need to be corrected. And therefore, the Torah it, 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 it's completely transparent and open and honest and doesn't make people into perfect human beings. So here's another example of how Noah, Noah is tzaddik, he's the, he's, and he's not a regular tzaddik, he's tzaddik, tzaddik, the perfect tzaddik. But here's another fault about Noah. Noah, till the marble, Noah's tremendous, he's, he's fantastic. He, he runs again, he swims up against the current of the whole world. Then in, in the Teva, he spends a hundred, he spends the whole year in the Teva feeding the animals. He's running, each animal has his own feeding schedule. He's running up and down the Teva. He's doing chesed nonstop for the, the whole time he's in the Teva. But when, when Noach emerges from the Teva, the Chumash says, Vayochel Noach. Noach, Vayochel means either he, he began and he, and he, Vayita Karim, he planted a vineyard, or Vayochel means that he, he debased himself. He defiled himself. He made him. He made him, him his, himself uh, secularized. So uh, profane. That's a better word. How so? Because Noah, he, because he planted a vineyard, he ended up making wine and he became drunk because with the wine. So the, the, the Rashi says that's not the first thing that he should have planted. When he came out of the teva, he shouldn't have been busy planting wine. He should have planted. There's wheat or other things for, for food, but not to plant wine for which could lead to intoxic intoxication. So the Chumash itself tells us the flaw of Noah, that he was at Tzadik up until the, ta up until the marble ended, 
But then Noah, Noah fell. And in fact, Chazal compare Noah to, to, to Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu starts out Ish Mitzri, the Torah describes him in Shmos. At the end of his life, he's Ish Elohim, the man of God. He goes from being an Egyptian to a man of God. But Noah is Ish Tzaddik. He, the Torah in the beginning of the parsha says he's an Ish Tzaddik. But in the end of the parsha, Yochel Noah, Ish Adama. Noah becomes a man of the land. He falls from his, from his Madrego. So I want to offer an explanation. Why indeed did Noah if he managed to be an East Sadiq, the whole time that he was living in a world of corruption, he would manage to, to rise above everybody else, and he was a Tzadik. So how come, when he, as soon as he came out of the Teva, all of a sudden Noach defiles himself, he debases himself, he makes himself profane? How, how, how do you explain that? So I would suggest that the, the answer is that Noach felt that he, he reached the apex of accomplishment. He became an East Sadiq. Even God himself said that he is a Sadiq. The commission part says, God told him, I, 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 see, I have observed that you're a Sadiq. So Noah reached the highest level and he received the highest compliment. So at that point, Noah felt, I'm done. I don't have to, I, I've done everything. I, I've reached the, the, the highest level of perfection and I don't have to do more. And the mistake that Noah made was there's no such thing as I'm finished. When it comes to human development, when it comes to, to character improvement, when it comes to, to our relationship with, with, with our Kaddish Baruch Hu, there is no such thing as I'm done. And Noah felt when he came out of the Teva, he survived. Everybody else was wiped out. The whole world was wiped out. Millions of people. He survived because he was a Tali Tavim. So Noah felt uh, look, I, 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 my, my life mission is accomplished. I become a great person. I, I, I've overshadowed everybody else. But the mistake was, there's no such thing in, in life as I'm done. I'm, I'm finished. And the, there's a lesson for, for us in that as well, because oftentimes people accomplish things and then they stop there. They, 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 they do it and then they stop. A person, for example, could learn Daf Yomi and he can make a Siyam Hashas and then he feels, wow, I made a Siyam Hashas. i done it. I don't have to do it again. I've, I've already reached that, that level. Or a person could study an area of Halacha and he could review it and master it and know it cold. But then afterwards, he doesn't, he doesn't he continue reviewing it because he feels, I've done it. I, I'm, I'm finished. I've got, I've got there. A, 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 a particular example that's striking is when it comes to working for the tzibur, working for the kahal, the communal work. There are people, let's say they work for a yeshiva or they work for a shul or they become, they're on the board or they become the, the president. And then it reaches the point where they say, I've, I've served my time. <laughs> I'm done. I don't have to do it again. That is the mistake that Noah made. He felt that he served his time. He, 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 he achieved the highest levels of, of accomplishment, but that was the mistake, that there's always more to be done. There's no such thing as I'm finished. The Torah says when it comes to the mitzvah tzedakah, nason titengo, you should give to, to a poor person, and it's a double phrase, nason titeng, it's a repetition. What did that say? Nason titeng, give and give, so Chazal say, I feel may upon him. You should, you, you should give and then give again. It doesn't matter. He came, he came to the house to, two days ago, he gave him a hundred dollars. Then he came yesterday, he gave him money. Then today he's coming. You don't say to him, I just gave you. What do you, what do you keep him bothering me? He, he, he comes because he needs the money. So you don't, can't say I was already Yotze. That's the whole point. Don't say I was Yotze. When it comes to shaking a Lulav and Esrog, you could be Yotze. You, eat, you shake it once, you're Yotze. You eat the Matzah on Pesach, you eat a Kazayas, or how much ever you have to eat, you're Yotze. But when it comes to interactions with other people, or when it comes to relationship with the Kaddish Baruch or when it comes to, 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 to growth, there's no such thing as I was Yotze. I'm done. I'm finished. I, I have completed. So when it comes to in involvement in communal affairs, there's always more to be done. And it doesn't matter, you do, you, a person's done their time. Well, very nice, wonderful, you deserve 
a shul dinner. <laughs> You'll get a reward and a plaque, put it up on your wall. But that doesn't mean that you're finished. In, in Parshas uh, Toldos, the Rivana Shah, the Yitzhak gives a bracha to Yaakov, the Yitin Lechalakim, God and God will give to you. So Rashi says, why say the Yitin and God will give to you? Rashi says, the Yitin, the Yachser, the Yitin. God will constantly give to you. He'll give to you and then he'll give over again. And that's what God is. God never says, you know, I, 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 I gave you Parnosa yesterday and you had food the other day and you, and you went out to a restaurant and the sun came up for, for the world. And I, so I've done it. I, I don't have to keep on doing it. No, God doesn't, doesn't stop. It's v'yitain v'yachsa v'yitain. He gives and then he, he continues to give. And every single day he gives again. And that's until the moment that a person st- leaves the world and stops reading, a person always has to continue to, to grow. The last day of Moshe Rabbeinu's life, the Torah says, Vayelach Moshe. Parsha's Vayelach. And everybody asks, where's Vayelach? Where's, where's he going? So one way of explaining it is that a human being is a holach. holach a malach is an omed. The Navi says, uh, we describe malachim as omdim. Because malachim are stationary. They don't grow. Malach is whatever he is. Or I don't know, the gender, he or she. But whatever malach is, they stay a malach. They stay the same. But human beings throughout their lifetime, they're a holach. They're always able to climb higher on the on the mountain. So even Moshe Rabbeinu's last day of his life, it was Vayelach Moshe. He continued to grow, and that's that was. This is where Noah made a mistake. Moshe Rabbeinu understood even to the very end, Vayelach Moshe, to the last minute that he was alive, Vayelach Moshe. But Noah thought he was finished. I've done it. I've accomplished. I, I God called me at Tzadik Tamid. What could be better than that? No, that was a big mistake. I mean, I, I feel bad criticizing Noah. Alavai, <laughs> I'm not a tzaddik tamim. Alavai should be as, as big a tzaddik as Noah, even with all all the uh, the, 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 the 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 failures of Noah. There's others that the Chazal described, but he was a great person. Why why are we knocking Noah? But Chazal are the ones that reveal. Many of the flaws of Noah. Noah then daven for his generation. So the, in the Navi it says, May, may, may Noah, that the, the Mabel was called Noah's Mabel. Why? Because he didn't daven. So Chazal already uh, 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 revealed the flaws in Noah. So Chazal could do it. So I'm just following Chazal. Noah deserves tremendous admiration. But nonetheless, there's always, the, the Torah does this. Because it, it's it's honest, so that we should learn not only from the good, but we should learn from the shortcomings, and that is the lesson here. Don't be like Noah that he when he reached the point of greatness, then it was Vayachal Noah. Then he fell short. Then he 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 became he made himself profane. And, and instead, in contrast, we should be like Avram Avinu. He starts out in Ish Mitzri, but the very last day, the end of the Torah, the last description. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu in Parshas, uh, in Parshas uh, Zosa Bracha Moshe is called an Ish Shoel Kim the man of God so but his whole life was an ascent and there never was a point where Moshe Rabbeinu said I'm satisfied I'm done and I'm finished thank you for listening and I wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom